In this video, I'd like to introduce my Pi Aquarium, a Raspberry Pi based aquarium display with feeding reminder and mains power automation. It's based around a Raspberry Pi with official Raspberry Pi touchscreen. We have recently set up a new aquarium in our home and I thought about combining that with a Raspberry Pi. So I created Pi Aquarium. Pi Aquarium is partly inspired by a visit to both the Sea Life Centre in Birmingham and the London Aquarium. Both of those had animated displays providing information about the fish. But I also wanted to overcome a challenge when it comes to feeding. We share the feeding with the family and wanted to know when they were due a feed or if somebody had already fed them. And whilst I was at it, I thought I could combine it with my Raspberry Pi Pi Power project, which includes home automation. This would provide a way to be able to turn the aquarium light on and off automatically. So, the combination of these three requirements and Pi Aquarium was born. It wasn't all plain sailing. I had problems with the flickering screen and problems due to the browser security model, but I'll explain those throughout the video, so keep watching to find out more. I'll also show you a hidden feature if you need to reset when the fish are last fed. If you want to follow along, there are more details on my website, penguintutor.com. Some of the things that I used in this design. First, I decided to use a Raspberry Pi 3. This should work with most models. Certainly a Raspberry Pi 4 or later may be a bit faster, but it's probably overkill. The Raspberry Pi 3 was the first that includes Wi-Fi and had a couple spare. You could use a Raspberry Pi 2 or earlier, but you'd need to use a Wi-Fi dongle. I'm using the Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Again, I had one spare that was not being used, but even if not, then the official touchscreen is well supported, so it's what I'd recommend. I used the Smarty Pi Touch 2 case. There was a configuration change needed to invert the screen because of how I mounted the case, but that was easy enough. Pi Mote is a Raspberry Pi add-on from Energini, which can be used to control remote control sockets. I've previously created some software to control it using a web interface, which I called Pi Power. I've updated the Pi Power software so that it can be used to provide a link back to the Pi Aquarium, allowing for simple integration between the two. The display was written in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I'll explain more about that shortly, including details of the Flickr problem. Now here's a sample of the HTML file. You may find it a bit small for your screen and some of the HTML is cut off, but don't worry, you can just download it from the GitHub page, linked from my website. The main thing is that this is a really basic HTML page. It's only 23 lines long, which includes some blank lines and comments. If you have even a little experience with HTML, it should be fairly easy to follow. The CSS is even shorter. All it does is to set a background image and sets the font for the main body. I may look at tweaking this in the future, but it doesn't need much. So combining the HTML and CSS, we have the starting of Pi Aquarium. Initially, I created a HTML page for each of the pages of information, basically one for each of the different species of fish, then use some JavaScript to switch between the pages. The problem is, is that there was an annoying flicker. As you can see, each time the page changes when it had to redraw the entire screen and I wasn't happy with the result. So back to the drawing board. Instead of creating multiple pages, I instead just used the one HTML file, the one I showed a minute ago, and updated all the relevant parts individually using JavaScript. So having realized that, I created most of the code in JavaScript. But before I go on to how the code works, I had to find a way of storing the data. I could have used HTML files and parsed those with a JavaScript or some other kind of format such as XML or JSON, but I didn't want the performance overhead of having to read in and interpret the data. So instead, I just created a file data.js and stored all the information in dictionaries. Well, technically in JavaScript, these are actually objects with key value pairs, but I use them like Python dictionaries, so I'll use that phrase. There is a downside to using that, that if you put a typo in the data file, it can stop the code from running. But I figured that was a risk worth taking in return for good performance. Compared to the rest of the files, the main JavaScript code is pretty long, around 130 lines in my current version. It includes code to preload the images, display the next page, and update the header to show when the fish need to be fed. It also takes a click from the user and stores that as the time when the fish was fed, it uses that to determine if they've been fed since they were last due. I'll quickly go through some of these, but you'll need to view the source code for the full details. This is the code to update the display. 
As you can see, it updates each of the elements separately, including the title, subtitle, image, and the main body. Note, it also calls update header, which is going to display whether the fish need to be fed. The code to determine if a fish is due to be fed is a bit longer. The code is mainly handling the date and time and comparing it against the specified times. Normally, I'd use cookies for storing the date of the last feed, but for this, instead, I used local storage. This is a feature of the browser which is persistent across sessions, so it's always present. And one of the final things is a sort of Easter egg. It's an option to delete the last feed time from the local storage. And it can only be called by clicking on the ellipsis on the loading page. So after the sequence has been started, you can't get back to that page, except by clicking on the PyMote remote control page and then going back to PyQuarium. So now you know how to do that. The other thing I implemented was PyPower. And this is a web-based interface for controlling electrical power sockets using energy sockets and the Pi Moat. This is what I was using on one of my touchscreens before I started this project. However, I only really used it at Christmas time for controlling my indoor and outdoor Christmas lighting. And I wanted to integrate this into the display as it could be useful for controlling the filter, aquarium heater and lighting. In fact, for the lighting, it can also be used to turn the light on and off automatically. And if you've got bare sockets, it can still be used for the Christmas lights. For this to work with PyQuarium, I added a menu option within the PyPower code, allowing a link to return to PyQuarium. But this did come with a little problem. The problem is that the PyPower app runs in its own web server, powered by Python Bottle. Whereas I was initially loading the PyQuarium information pages by reading them directly off the Raspberry Pi SD card. On Chrome, or Chromium in this case, this causes a problem in that for security reasons, it does not allow you to link from a web page to a local file. So when trying to go back from PyPower to PyQuarium display, it would not work. I overcame this by moving the PyQuarium files to the PyPower public folder and serving them all up from within the PyPower web server. I overcame this by moving the PyQuarium files to the PyPower public folder, serving them all up from within the PyPower web server. This does mean that these files are all available on the local network, unless you've got appropriate security in place for that. With those problems out of the way, then it was complete. All that was needed was to mount it to the wall and put it to use. You can see the finished project here captured using VNC. Thanks for watching. Hope you found something useful in this video. If so, please give it a like and let me know in the comments. I'm working on some more Raspberry Pi projects at the moment and hoping to put together another touchscreen project soon. So if you've not already subscribed, please do so. Click on the notification icon to find out about my future videos as they are released.